Hey guys, welcome to Data Track, your one stop channel for all the data science and machine learning updates. Today, today I have Abhirup Kumar with me, who is working as a senior data scientist for Misho. And prior to that, he has worked for United Health Groups, and uh, he is an IIT Kharagpur graduate. Uh, one special thing about Abhirup is that he likes to participate in hackathon, data science competitions, and he beautifully applies the learning from those hackathons into his work. So welcome, welcome Abhirup to the channel. Thanks, thanks Abhishek. Thanks for the great introduction. Yeah. So Abhirup, uh, so tell us like how you got started with data science at first place. So it all started from the uh, college itself when I was in the second year. Uh, I saw my seniors taking part in various hackathon. They were po- they were posting the results on the Facebook groups. At that at that time, we uh, use Facebook a lot. So when I saw my seniors from my department posting the uh, leader leaderboard screenshot, and also those seniors got a good in- internship at that time. So I got motivated to see how they are doing. I just I also wanted to explore this field. Uh, I was not interested to do mining at that time. Uh, so I uh, went ahead and talked to senior how they, they take part, how to start and all. So I started learning about data science from the seniors, uh, read a lot of blogs and slowly took part in hackathons. And from there, my interest, uh, I got interested in the data science field and yeah. Now I love what I do. That's the best part. When we are learning a new concept or new thing, uh, we are reading the theory, we are reading the blocks and also applying that learning into hackathons or those practical uh, use cases. So that's the best learning because both theory and practical is going hand on hand. That's awesome. So, so Abhirup, like which was your first hackathon or the most memorable one? which you will always cherish yes this was the thing that got me started into the field right so i remember one hackathon uh there is a tech fest in our college which is um Achithis. so one uh company i can't recall the name but they organized the data science hackathon in our college at that time i just started learning data science i started with the language r so uh, I took part in th- that hackathon because all of my colleagues and all of my seniors took part in that hackathon. So I was not able to build a simple tree-based model at that time. Uh, but somehow I do some group buy and through Excel itself, although data size was 1 million, but I just uh, used Excel and did some mean, median, something. and. Uh, uh, submitted a prediction and by my surprise i was in the top five through the excel mean <laughs> approach <laughs> <laughs> and uh, at the end i got few clues uh, from the data set only and i continue using excel only and just by using excel i got uh, rank one <laughs> that, that happened. everyone used uh, different uh, models at that time uh, i don't think light gpm and uh, the models were so popular uh, people were still using uh, random forest and all and that was a multi classification problem so it's a little tough to apply uh, the tree based model as it is so my excel uh, work uh, <laughs> did the job and i actually won that hackathon and in the uh presentation when they asked what did you do <laughs> and then i told that i used excel and do even more to get the result they were shocked <laughs> but yeah they, from there i started uh from the hackathon but yeah um if i talk about the most memorable one uh that uh actually was another hackathon that i took part when i was doing uh, my final internship in bangalore so i had two uh month of time so uh, there was a hackathon which is going on on an Arctic with them and the pollen statement was to predict if any user will give or candidate will give an examination then whether the candidate will pass the examination or not and there were a lot of characteristic of examination and users were present in the table uh, so at that time i just started with the modeling part i tried with the tree based model i explored random forest then i get to know about uh, boosting algorithm. I tried Ada Boost and all. 
I I I tried almost all the uh, classification algorithm which were popular at that time, and then came to know about XGBoost and LightGBM. Saw different hackathons, uh, uh, previous hackathons that winners winners solutions got a lot of uh, uh, good insight from there. Tried to implement of all of them. Few worked, few didn't work. So by just learning, but it just by learning from the others people and try our, my own approach. I think in in two months, I did a lot of different techniques, uh, like stacking on Sumble, and finally able to uh, stood uh, rank one there. And uh, when I saw the uh, solution of the other winners, which were on the uh, rank two and three, their solution were very simple. I tried all the sophisticated technique uh, all the assemble and uh, stacking technique but what they have done is just applied cat boost because at that time cat boost was a very new model and very low no uh, low very less people know about cat boost model and in the data set there are there are two few columns which have very high uh, uh, cardinality so cat boost worked really well at that set and i didn't know about that i tried target encoding and all and using that i got a good result but there were few simple technique that people have applied and they also got a very good um uh, output so yeah overall that hackathon was a really learning experience for uh, for me all the learning that i got from that because all the technique that i have learned i just tried in the single hackathon so same learning i still use in different project that i do uh, in the company in the different hackathon so yeah, that was a, one of the most memorable hackathon I had in my past. That's that's very motivating. Even I can relate to it. When I was doing competitive coding, I also used to solve a problem and then look at editorial, how they have solved and the other people, how they have solved. And that's how I improved a lot in algorithm and problem solving. And same techniques you applied here in data science. And I think one thing that the listeners could learn is that it's not about number of hackathons. One hackathon where you try, tried everything, read a lot of other, uh, how the algorithm works and all. So even if one problem, one hackathon you do, but do it with in that depth, then you learn pretty well. <laughs> and also the other thing that for me is that um, you started with Excel, then you were doing things in Python and all. And now when I see you at everyday work, you are crunching data at a scale, millions of rows, billions of rows making tons of features and you are like one of the most complete practical data scientists I have seen. So yeah, you have come a long way from how you started to now and that too in not very um, long duration, in a shorter duration. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you told us the journey, how you got started with data science and hackathons, mostly by, under, by, by knowing from seniors the different hackathons they participate and uh, from competition you got interest, then you came into the field. So, um, Tell us about some of the best learnings that have happened from the hackathons in terms of uh, feature uh, engineering, feature creation, selection, and model explainability. Tell us some of the learnings that which have happened from these hackathons or just in general, what are the best uh, practices that you use? Right. Uh, so I mostly take part in uh, uh, classical ML hackathon, which is mostly on the tabular data. I still need to take part in deep learning. So I'm not aware about much technique around that, but I can talk about how, what are technique I will learn from the tabular data or maybe the classical ML side. <clears throat> so uh, there are few uh, basic things which work in almost all the hackathon that I um, took part in. The first one is how important Important is to create important features because now everyone know, knows about CAD boost, light GPM, XG boost. So, mo so modeling technique is not a key differentiator between you and some other people. How you create features is differentiate your performance. So for me, uh, building features, which is relevant to the problem statement is a crucial uh, part of the hackathon. That is first. Second uh, is uh, there are a lot of different data types in in the data in the 
data set for example if have, if we have a categorical column we need to treat it differently if we have a date column there are a lot of different thing we can do for example uh, we can get day month year from the date and as well as if, if you see the date is a cyclic number so after 31 or 30 of every month it again start with one but how model will learn that after 31 the next number is one so we need to make this date cycling. So there are different way people I have seen hackathons winner solution. They have tried different way to make this date cyclic. Uh, for a date, let's say we have a weekday, uh, we start from one to seven. We can make it uh, cyclic by passing them in sign of cos uh, curve. And the theta value we can pass here is two pi value of the feature upon maximum value of a feature. For example, mm -hmm. in weekday max value is seven. Mm -hmm. So let's say whatever value we are currently at, let's say six, six by seven into two pi is the theta and we can pass to the cost function. The whatever value we will get is a feature value. So like that, we can create a lot of cyclic features from the date. And from categories, we can either pass light GBM as it is. I have seen in lot of hackathon, even without passing categorical column uh, sp uh, separately, we can pass it as it is, and Light GBM can handle it very accurately. Mm -hmm. um, other other thing that I have also learned that uh, one leave out target encoding sometimes give you a good result, but we need to be very caution about overfitting and all. Um, so yeah, these are the few. Um, simple or basic technique that I always try to apply in every hackathon. And I always try to create as many features as possible from the categorical column. Like if let's say we have an ID. So I just took group by of ID and they count, count number of unique occurrence of this ID in the data set, mean value of some other feature through this ID, maximum mode, and all those different variety of feature I can create, I just create it. It's possible that not all feature is important, but we deal those things at later part of the stage. But mm. while creating features, I just create as many as possible. Mm. So that's how I uh, mm. go ahead with the hackathon feature mm. creation. But business understanding is very crucial. If you mm. have a depth understanding of the problem statement and you have a domain knowledge, mm. you can create a lot mm. good features uh, from that. So that is really helpful. Uh, apart from this, uh, validation set, I think it's very crucial to make mm. because they're, they're, I saw some hackathon where the data set that they have gave you for training is very different from the data set that they are using on the leaderboard. So mm. although you have uh, built a very good model, it may happen that more performance on the leaderboard will not reflect. Mm -hmm. So it's very important to create a data set locally, which reflect the true, uh, reflect the true uh, indication of how leaderboard is uh, performing. So there are some way how you can create a, a, a data set very similar to leaderboard data set uh, locally. So maybe if you want, I can discuss otherwise, there are a lot of different blogs that talks about that. I will share maybe in your description sure. and other, mm -hmm. but yeah, it's very important to have your local validation set very strong such that you will not overfit your data. So that is on the validation part. So yeah, that's, um, and, and anything around uh, target variable, uh, like, uh, like you, you may have to predict something which is, uh, in some cases it may be zero or one label, but in other cases, if it's a regression problem, like, do you do right. any target variable, uh, massaging? Right, right, yeah. True, true, yeah. Your point is correct, right. So for features, I guess in tree based model, normalization is not very mm. crucial part. Uh, mm. Performance is almost the same. There is no need. But yeah, for target variable, it's very important that we eliminate outliers from the target variable, or maybe we can reduce the effect of outlier by transforming it in some way, like mm. log transform square root is not q root mm -hmm. such that the regression problem that we are solving uh, is uh, not uh, getting affected by the outliers which are present in target variable so either remove it at one or i or rather uh, transform it and then train the model and while prediction you can uh, retransform it back to the normal scale so yeah those type of techniques also 
usually work in hackathons too. Mm. Yeah. So, so uh, we have covered the feature creation, target variable massaging, but now you have created tons of features. Now, during the feature selection, uh, how would you mm. select the important features? Right. So, for selecting important feature, um, there are some techniques that uh, I usually try. It not always work on every data set, but most of them I saw it's working. So, uh, I created a random noise in the data by uh, putting a random variable, which is uniform, normal, or left or right skew. And then once we have a features which are random, I build a model again with the same parameter, whatever I use it before. And then create a shapty feature importance of all the features I have. And then I, I eliminate the features which are coming lower than the random features. So by that, it makes sure that we are not training the model on the feature, which is noisy. And also it simplifies the, the model a, a lot. And once we eliminate a lot of features, then there are still some features on which models are overfitting. So I sometimes not on every data set data is possible. If the data set is small, I uh, iteratively start with the uh, top of most important feature and eliminate it from the model and see what's the model performance and then continue the process again and again. And if in some features after eliminating the model performance improve, I just eliminate the feature at all. And all the performance of the model, I'm checking on the holdout set Perfect. on the validation. Set. Yeah. Mm. And the, if the performance improve on validation, and the same fee with the same feature performance also improve on holdout set, then we are sure that this feature's uh, model way overfitting, we can remove it. So by doing this small, small technique, uh, I usually remove the overfitted features and the noisy features from the training data. And actually we have seen this works in industry problems as well. We have seen that performance almost goes 10 to 15% up by doing these small techniques. They, right. this, this may look simple uh, hacks, but they really boost the performance almost 10 to 15% at times. And as you said, right. depending on problem to problem, the gains can differ. So, right. uh, so Abhirup, like we talked about uh, feature creation, selection, also some target variable massaging. And when it comes to explainability, everyone wants the that sophisticated ML model not to be a black box. So what do you do for explainability of that ML model? So I, in hackathon, we, uh, there's no need of, uh, explainability for <laughs> winning the hackathon, mm -hmm. but for our sake, we have, we can do it and create more, uh, innovative features from the feature importance, which is coming from the, uh, model, but for industry problem, it's very important to understand why we are, uh, giving some prediction. So I, most of the time I use Shapley values. Uh, because uh, it has a power to estimate each feature contribution to what final prediction. And also we can leverage this uh, number to get the global feature importance. So it, it have a lot of uh, different capability that we can leverage from the simple Shapley. So yeah, for me, this particular feature, this particular uh, capability is really great to understand how and why my model is giving some prediction. Perfect. And I have seen that you use for Shapley also, you use multiple uh, charts. Sometimes it becomes very difficult for me to understand those multiple charts in the library. Shapley offers multiple charts, right? So which are the like one or two chart that are like giving uh, most uh, information what the model has learned? So the, the common one is the feature importance, mm. sharp feature importance chart, which give you the global importance of a mm. model. Mm. And another is the uh, local interpretability uh, chart, which mm. is a waterfall chart, mm. which will help understand uh, mm. if the mean of a target variable start from this value, mm. then why model has given this prediction for this particular row. So all mm. the features mm. which 
is there for that particular row, it will help you understand what are the top five or top 10 features mm -hmm. which are giving you the predictions that you are getting from the model. So yeah, waterfall chart from for local and for global, it's a feature importance chart. Perfect. My next question is around uh, something that we have already covered in bits and pieces. But again, like uh, putting that question across, how much of these learnings from hackathon um, applies in industry problems and what are the differences in the two that you see in hackathon versus industry problems? Uh, for me, a lot of uh, uh, technique that I have learned, I can apply it uh, in the production job of the companies. But the only problem I see there is in hackathon, we have an opportunity to do very sophisticated uh, technique to boost the model performance. Like while prediction, we can create a single IDBM model with a different random seed and different call by sample. And then at last take a mean of that. Uh, and also maybe we can divide our data into 10 fold and build 10 different model on uh, all the folds and then take a mean. So all those uh, ensemble stacking things we can do in hackathon very easily, but in production in companies, it's very difficult to go with those sophisticated models. Uh, so that is a difference between hackathon and the company work. Uh, but if I talk about good part is um, all the learning that you have from the hackathon, you know what thing is going to work for this data set because you have a, intuition that uh, from the previous hackathons so for you it's very easy to uh, get it right at the first time itself you don't need to iterate over different solution to come up with the optimal one for you the iteration will be little, way lesser than the person who may be not doing hackathon and mm. uh, need to try all the iteration mm. in the record mm. itself so that's the good part. So, yeah. Got it. And one difference that I see is that in hackathons, you have a, you get the data. So already, you know, what features to create, but in industry, you have to come up with the features. Yeah. Features is scale. Yeah. Features is scale. So you have to come up with all the features. And secondly, as you said, the techniques are apl applicable. And if you have the learnings from hackathons, you can apply those techniques to get additional boost and as mm -hmm. well as iterations will be lesser because, uh, because you know, what works, what doesn't work. <laughs> right. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Thank, thanks, Aviru, for sharing your insights. This will be really uh, good learning for the listeners. And uh, next, I want to ask you that uh, apart from work, what is there that gives you a kick? Like what you like doing apart from work? <laughs> apart from work, I uh, love doing photography. So... Uh, I have a passion of uh, taking photos. So in my college also, I was a part of filmmaking society. Uh, so we created a lot of short movies there. And I was a part of uh, uh, media, sa media sale in the so social cultural fish in our college. So uh, there I handle all the uh, uh, media related stuff there. So from that, I got interest. interest and in the in the day to day life also after come after coming out of the college i still in my free time i do photography so yeah that's the one i usually do amazing amazing even i do few things apart from work like i work out and uh, uh, i would just create some youtube videos and all and i feel that what happens is when you are always thinking about the work new ideas won't come but when you are doing something else apart from work you will get some idea related to work, which like you won't get it if you are thinking consciously about it. But when you're not thinking about it, doing something else, doing some other hobby, unconsciously that ideas will come and that will help you in your work as well. And also like it's good to do other things as well because like it, <laughs> it gives you a wider perspective of a lot of things. Sure. So Abhiru, one last question before we wrap up. Uh, what would be what would be your advice to the people who wants to start with data science start with data science okay uh so i think nowadays there are a lot of good youtube channels that 
teach you uh, from the basic to very advanced level uh, like yours also <laughs> so people can leverage those uh, youtube video uh, a lot apart from that hackathon is the one that will give uh, someone the practical knowledge of how the data science things will work how the model whatever they are learning in youtube video when they will they, they will go and apply those in the real data they will understand a lot of different insight uh, from uh, by doing so so i think hackathons uh, nowadays i think for last two years the uh, united vidya is not organizing any hackathon so only a uh, very few uh, platform are active in india like machine hack and some other so mostly international uh, platform is the is the option right now to take part for beginner beginner i will not suggest kaggle uh, uh, to go to start with because the data set size is little huge and you will uh, hardly find any uh, tabular data competition there most of the competitions are images and deep learning side but the discussion forum of those kaggle hackathons is uh, great there are a lot of good people who are sharing their knowledge uh, about learnings that they have so it's very important to um, uh, go ahead and understand what what's going on in the current market there are different technique which people are exploring and sharing there so yeah i think hackathon blogs youtube videos are the best thing to go ahead with completely agree like when you are learning a theory you should definitely do a practical of it then only you will get the confidence and the true learning will happen yeah and also one question that i get asked a lot these days is people who wants to start nowadays they are confused because there is a lot of things there are, there are llms there is deep learning and lot of stuff so my suggestion is always the same that you start with the basic the fundamentals learn about linear regression some statistics concept and then go to the advanced stuff right right agree agree yes uh, so uh, abhirup any message for the data track viewers uh, yeah one thing i must say to all the viewers um that data data track abhishek is doing a great job uh, sharing what's going on in industry i think i really find any good uh, youtube videos or channel which share the practical knowledge of the data science how it's going so yeah keep updated with what's going on with abhishek's channels data track it's yeah thank you thank you abhirup thank you for joining bye okay.